Hey guys, my name is Lily and today's topic is going to be about uh, natural made containers. So usually I have one of my canteen sets with me, like this canteen here. It's made from titanium and it's a very high-end uh, container, probably one of the best that you can get on the market nowadays. But what happens if I lose this container in the wilderness? Can I make myself a makeshift container out of natural materials, which is waterproof? So today's challenge is that I want to make myself a water container from natural materials only. Now in case I would lose my canteen, uh, I would first try to search for trash in the wilderness. So unfortunately, you find a lot of uh, plastic bottles in the wild and also metal containers or glass bottles even and in that case I would try to find trash of course so that's what I would try first but if you don't find any trash then you kind of have to make your own makeshift container out of natural materials and that's what I want to attempt today okay so for my water container I need to find a log which is made from softwood because then it's easier to carve and which has about this size so it's not becoming too heavy but also not too thin and which is branchless so here you can see that there's this small section here which doesn't have any branches at all now this uh, dead tree here is willow and it has fallen over a couple of months ago and it's really important that the wood is still fine so it shouldn't have any splits or damages because otherwise it will leak and then you will have a problem with your container so now i'm going to take my saw and i cut off this section here with my saw and theoretically you can take your knife or your axe to do this job too but here the saw comes in really handy because you want to have a nice small log with a nice end at both sides Make sure that you are holding the lock so that it doesn't break down because of its own weight. It's really important that the lock is in one piece and doesn't have any cracks. Okay, so I've sawn off this almost perfect lock here and it has a little bit of a curve but that's going to be fine. And yeah, now I'm going to strip off the bark and then we are going to continue processing the water container. <laughs> so now I'm taking my knife and I try to get off the bark from the log. There are some deer tracks here, quite a lot of them. Okay, now I want to split this log into four pieces and for that I'm using my knife again and this is my own design survival knife and I've designed it very robust so that it can take a rough beating and I tried to split it two times through the middle and across like this Okay, this is the first split and it went right through the middle and now I'm going to split it two more times. And one more time. It's really important that you split through the lock very carefully 
so you don't damage the outer rim uh, of the log and it's very important that you don't carve away anything from the outside now from this corner or from here uh, now we only want to carve out from the center of the log so you can either do this with your knife or you can use your saw again okay so this is up and this is bottom and now we want to leave the bottom alone so about here we make a mark and this much of wood we want to leave alone and from here upwards we want to carve away the wood and then we should uh, leave a little bit of the rim here at least this much okay I've made four cuts into the wood and now I'm going to take my knife and pry out the wood as good as I can And I make sure that I leave the bottom alone. Now I can take my baton and baton the rest of the wood away. And it's really important that you leave the sides here alone. Okay, this is the first of the quarters done and now I do the same thing to all of the four other quarters. Okay, finally I'm done with carving all of the logs. Now we need some cordage and connect the four parts together again. Okay, now I'm searching for some roots. At least I'm trying. Uh, hmm. Let's see, what do we have here? This is a root from a tree. Okay, the first side is done. Now I need a second root for uh, here and maybe a third one around here. I just found this old stinging nettle and stinging nettle also makes a very good cordage. So I quickly make myself a little bit of cordage here. I'm really surprised that I found some stinging nettle because it's the end of December and usually this time of the year you won't find them anymore but this is still good and I can weave it into some cordage you only have to get rid of the woody part which is in the middle and you have to do that without destroying the fiber too much now the stinging nettle didn't work too well so here I have another root which I want to split and make quarter to it.
Okay, I need to make a fire because I'm cold and Amy is shivering also. Amy, go. make a nice pyramid fire because this type of fire uh, radiates the most heat and that's what I need right now because today we only have two degrees Celsius so it's much nicer to work besides the fire than to just sit in the cold Okay, here's one more detailed shot of how the container looks like right now. It's looking really good. Okay, so to seal this container, I want to use the uh, pine pitch glue that I've made in the previous video. And this glue is great because uh, it can seal off any cracks and gaps uh, watertight. And now I will heat this up and go over all of the cracks and if it works out this should be waterproof. So I'm going to start at the bottom where it's the most uh, important. So I have sealed the cracks and now comes the moment of truth and I want to fill up um, this container and see if it's really waterproof or not. Okay, I have about 
Half a liter left. Woo! Okay, I have a, a few holes in here. I gotta do a little bit of more sealing and then I will come back to you. Finally, I got it waterproof. <laughs> so I estimate that half a liter goes into this log, which is not too bad. Okay, so it took me some time to get this waterproof and finally I'm done. So now I have about half of the bottle full with water. And as you can see, when I try to bring the water up the rim, oops, <laughs> it's completely waterproof. Yeah, so this is how you can make yourself a waterproof container for transporting water. Unfortunately, you cannot put this into the fire and boil the water in it because then the glue would melt. So this is more for transportation of water than it is for boiling water. And it took me quite some time to make this container. So I think it took me like four hours. Yeah, I don't know if I would make something like this in a survival situation because in a survival situation you will have other tasks which are more important than uh, making this container here. And on the way to this place I found like four plastic bottles and two glass bottles. So uh, the reality is that you probably don't have to make something like this uh, because you will find some trash bottles. Okay, Amy, it was just a tear. But I guess this is what you could have made in Stone Age. And yeah, you can also use it for different kind of um, storage, not only water, but you can also collect some tinder and put it into here, make a waterproof lid. I'm hearing like five pheasants. Here, over here, and over there. <laughs> okay, so this is how you can make a waterproof bottle from natural materials only in the wilderness. Thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.